you guys, uh, I, I'm so excited to talk to our next guest, so much so that I just talked to him for an hour uh, before this, because I'm on his show on Monday, and I just had one of the best conversations I've had in forever. I've had some really good conversations, but I had a blast. I was just texting with my friend going like, oh my God, I just, I really, I just went off. And of course, he chose me to start Black History Month on his show, which I think is just <laughs> such a great choice uh, for me uh, to do that. I think I think it's an obvious choice, but nonetheless, I enjoyed myself. So on Monday, I'm going to have you guys go listen to this because I'm telling you, we go through it in terms mm -hmm. of Bravo. We unleash our furies. And so this is going to be a conversation where we're going to talk about Salt Lake, talk, you know, what he's watching, stuff like that. But we're also going to talk about something about DC Comics and Warner Brothers. And you're like, Ryan, I don't even like comics. You don't have to like comics to need, to be able to appreciate what we're going to talk about because they announced a whole new slate of films. They're basically saying what we've done in the past sucks and we are now giving it over to these two men and they presented, they did a presentation with their whole new slate of films for the next eight to 10 years. And it's mm -hmm. really wild when something doesn't work that could make money and how much gets invested in these things. We see this with Bravo as well. So I think it's a really, it's something that we do need to talk about. And you know, I love streaming. I love movies. I love comics. And so does our guest. You know him from the hit show, which by the way, is now signed with iHeartRadio and Cloud 10. Uh, you know, his name is Kendrick T Turner, but the, the show is called Reality and Comics 2. So welcome back, Kendrick Turner. What's up, dude? Kendrick Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> ah! and by the way guys i'm re i'm literally this is how this is how messed up i am i'm reading his last name right behind him on the video screen <laughs> and my mind transcribed it to turner it's i'm okay. losing i'm losing no no i'm losing i'm losing my mind lately the audience can attest to that uh okay so bindrick burner is with us today and bindrick is going to uh what's up dude by the way I just yelled and screamed on your podcast for an hour. So it was amazing. I, I thank you for doing. Oh, no, really? I mean, I was, there are certain things that really get me juiced up for like doing this. And that was so mm -hmm. much fun. I can't wait yes. for you guys to hear it. Um, so a little bit about you, uh, just to remind people, tell me about your show, Reality and Comics too, because you really are mm -hmm. a blend. And we were talking about that at the end of your show about, mm -hmm. I think that's it, you know, is that we love all of us love so much, even, you know, the listeners out there, we, we love even more than just Bravo. So it's really cool. Tell, tell me what, how would you describe your show? May, you know what? I've kind of taken on the moniker. If you can't tell I'm a comic book fan, I've kind of taken on the monikers, like the boyfriend and girlfriend's podcast in a way. Cause like so many people reach out to me and say that like, I started listening for the Bravo stuff, yeah. but now I can talk to like my kids and someone else about comics because I listen to you. And so like, I, it's a place where you come and you can like, I, I talk, I watch everything. First of all, like it doesn't matter. I watch it, whatever you think it is. I watch it. So like, I'm obsessed with Marvel. I'm obsessed with like all things HBO. I watch all the Netflix crap. I watch Hulu. I watch everything. So my bread and butter, of course, is I like love reality TV. So I talk Housewives. I talk Bachelor. I talk love. I love me some Love Island. Don't play. I'm a I'm an Ekin <laughs> Sue slut. So Which, I'm, by I the way, you guys, Ekin. new season, he pointed this out to me, is now on Hulu. Mm -hmm. Like I was saying, like, you might want to get a VPN, but now you don't have to because it took two weeks. Now the overseas show has started on Hulu. So yep. you can dip your toe in the Love Island water. And we're both huge fans of Love Island. Yes. Always make sure. I always tell people if you're going to watch on Hulu like I do, you got to kind of block out some of the stuff on social media because it it's always trending when it's on. So you will get something ruined for you fast. So make sure you block it out. Just watch the show. Talk to your friends about it. Don't don't let them over there ruin it for you, ruining the surprises because somebody that you're rooting for to go home just might be going home and it might get ruined for you. So just stick to it. But I love everything over yeah. there. I talk all things. I love bringing people on to talk Bravo, to talk Marvel, to talk anything. I'll, I'll talk about anything. I think I, I know that, but like explain to people why you got into podcasting. How long has it been now? And, and wh what got you started? Um, so I had wanted to been do, I wanted to do it for God knows how long. Cause I'm just like, I, I got into like the, the true crime era. Cause like I was watching like stuff on TV and I'm like, okay, this isn't enough. Like when I go to the park, 
I need to be able to listen to something about me getting murdered in the park. So like I found <laughs> podcasts, <laughs> I found all kinds of podcasts. Wait, and stuff. I need to feel danger. I need to feel yes. danger and that I possibly could be murdered listening to this podcast. Absolutely. If you, you haven't felt fear until you've listened about like somebody in your exact scenario being murdered. It's like, Oh God, this is haunting. So like I was finding like, you know, that stuff. And so I was like, I got into that stuff, but for some reason I didn't make the connection that like, people talked about anything in podcasts. Like I always thought yeah. it was just like certain like genres and stuff. So like, I didn't know there was this big like reality TV base out there. So I was like, you know what? I've constantly been saying, I'm going to try this. And then boom, the world upended in 2020. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do my research. I'm going to get a good microphone. I'm going to, you know, <laughs> tell Xfinity to stop cutting out every other day. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. And so I ended up wait, just Kendrick, going wait, Kendrick, what do you mean? What do you mean by world upturn? Do you mean just a bad Roni season? What do you mean? What happened in 2020? <laughs> that too. But you know, <laughs> you know, we yeah, all by the way, started working. The pandemic, <laughs> by the way, this is how we really should take the pandemic seriously. Cause if this happens again, we we're gonna have another thousand new podcasts. So we really gotta yeah. make sure we wash our hands, we be careful because <laughs> we're on the verge of having way too many podcasts without another pandemic. Oh my um, God, we so, literally, it's so crazy because I feel like I've seen, so I've made so many friends in this space, but then like, they've just gone away. They're like, yeah, I don't want to do it anymore. I'm like, no, where'd you go? Where are you? Yeah. I started Pussy, get you? back right. here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's like, by the way, we're the, we're the island, we're the, the island of misfit toys where we, yes. you know, like I always say like, listen, this is it for me. Like I, I I'll go down with this ship. Like this, mm -hmm. I mean, I will, uh, you know, it's like the, the music people on the Titanic just playing until the ship yes. goes down. Like that's, that's, me. that's I don't have, no other plan at this this uh point in place um so you just cover everything you love everything which i think is mm -hmm. also awesome um because you gotta love it to a degree to be able to talk about it and to be able to give mm -hmm. your opinions we talk on his show on monday a lot about what we're disliking with reality shows right now and stuff like that mm -hmm. so i think we had a really amazing conversation that i'm not going to dip too much into because it's over there in in all its glory, but I will, uh, you know, we were talking about a lot about Salt Lake um, and yes. tonight, and by the way, right after this, you guys, I'm gonna do a recap of the second part and final part of the Salt Lake reunion, thank God. We were talking <laughs> about Mary Cosby possibly coming back to the show and then we yes. got done with that. You went to walk your dog and all of a sudden I open up the old uh, Instagram and Mary Cosby has been hired back to the show as a friend of. Now, what do you think about this? Because I had said on your show that I was like, listen, that's great if she comes back, but it doesn't really fix the fundamental flaws of this show so far, thus far. But what do yes. you feel? I think they're headed in the right direction. It, people that listen to me know for some reason, I found Mary Cosby to be one of the funniest people on TV. I don't know what it Agreed. was, but her, she was just hilarious in every aspect, especially season two. You could tell that season one, she was supposed to be a friend of, and then they kind of shoehorned her into the show because yeah, she really didn't have scenes with They like people. had her show up. They kind of yeah. had her show up, but people wouldn't talk to her. It was yeah. Like, and like I said, she she was kind of like Kyle Cook, where she was like doing monologues to herself in her closet, or you know, she would mm -hmm. talk to the mannequin heads in season two. And I was like, but by the way, still very entertaining talking to the mannequin heads absolutely I'm, I'm of the mind that i'm so happy that she's coming back i don't think it fixes the problem entirely though because they man they've got a it concerns me that they're about to start filming the new season in a couple of weeks two weeks yeah. that that's insane to me like you you could not have solved this problem if, because i mean let's he's a whole criminal but jen shaw was a huge part of this show yeah, that's a big void to fill you've really got to like kind of figure out where you're going to go and who you're going to get my personal opinion and this might be crazy as hell but season one we found out that like Heather and Lisa had friends in common that like would go between to tell rumors about each other. Get one of those friends on the show. Like, I want to know why you thought Heather was a good time girl. I want to know what you think about a blow jobs for jazz tickets. Like get this girl on the show yeah, immediately. Yeah. Guys, you didn't like, that's what pissed me off about the third season is that you didn't dive into any of the shit you set up. You can't exactly. just drop blow job for jazz tickets and then just <laughs> drop it. Like, I, I just don't understand in any reality. I don't care what Jen Shaw did. That has nothing to do with blow job for jazz tickets. And I'm like, <laughs> why are we not mining this? You're like you, you set off a bomb and then you just forget about it. 
Well, I got to ask you now, because with, if you had to, you know, suppose we go down with the ship, we're on the Titanic, we can't do podcasting anymore. Now you have to work for a nonprofit. Are you working for blowjobs for charities or are you working for homeless, not toothless? I'm huge into teeth. I'm going to do the two because like homeless, not toothless. You get to meet celebrities. You get a, yeah. you know, like you're in the, you get to go backyard dinners where, uh, well now Rena won't be screaming anymore. Uh, at Sutton, <laughs> but like, listen, I want to see Melissa Etheridge scared of a bunch of Beverly Hills ladies singing, you know, come to my window. <laughs> I think I got to go homeless, not toothless, even though blowjob for jazz tickets is done so much amazing work for so many people <laughs> that have needed blowjobs. And, exactly. Uh, no, no, yeah, no, I think, well, this is the thought that just occurred to me is Jen Shaw goes into prison February 16th, right? Yes. So they're starting to film, I believe, February 15th. Would you want to see Jen Shaw go into prison? Oh, I had not thought about that, but you know what i put it on there give her that one check send it to the victims but also it's kind of like the reverse Teresa Janici, where we saw her coming home from prison and so like let's send somebody off we haven't done that in reality tv yet let's let's send somebody off to jail then we'll do another check-in in six and a half years see how it goes i'm here for i it. disagree <laughs> I, I disagree with you i don't want i want her story done i don't want yeah i feel tying yourself to jen shaw is like tying yourself to the titanic you need yeah. to cut ties i don't want to see her go in i don't and also especially after the shit she pulled with dear jen shaw.com not oh, giving God. the interview to andy i take that kind of stuff really personal because i'm like how dare <laughs> you like this is one of the only places that is willing to pay you money and you're going to act now that like also it's what we talked about on your show that comes out monday you guys is that i i want to spend my time watching things that are pseudo real and then yeah. jen and all the court documents says how fake these shows are she's just playing a character then i don't want you here i don't want you to have to put on a performance mm -hmm. i want to see people that are willing to be themselves on these shows and i feel like that salt lake has gotten so far from that i mean yeah. i almost wanted mary cosby to come back for the reunion not even having been on the season this far, she just watches the episodes and comes in and goes, you're annoying, you're this, you're that. Like, I would have loved her just to critique the ladies that were there, you know? Absolutely. I'm I'm still sad that we never got that, uh, what is it, talking to Mary Cosby podcast or whatever the hell it was called. Like, I was waiting for that shit every week. We never Wait. got it. Oh, I listened to one episode. She wasn't even in it. Like, she, I think the guy <laughs> kept going like, yeah, Mary's going to be here in a second. And I was like, I listened to like, I, then I started fast forwarding. It was like an hour and 15 minutes. And they had all these music Jeez. breaks. And I was like, what is going on here? But Mary mm -hmm. Cosby is an enigma wrapped in a riddle that I don't think. But I will say also, <laughs> I hope Mary really thought this out. I hope her grandfather, husband really thought this out because... <laughs> When you do these shows, you shine a light on everything that you do, uh -huh. business and elsewhere. And so just think about what we were talking about when Mary Cosby was on the show. And just remember, we don't know what's happened since. And I just, with the Jen Shaw of it all, the Erica Jane of it all, I hope that they have thought that through. And I hope Bravo did too. Like, I hope Bravo thought yeah. that through as well. That That's always, and you know what? Now it's not it's not even people that uh that necessarily like have any allegations against them too. Now just when I see people on Housewives that are too rich, I'm just like, oh, what are you doing? Oh, What's dude, going on? <laughs> I want to give one example right now, but I think I might be interviewing them, so I don't want to say it yet. But like there's a couple examples where now I get really nervous because don't you remember watching Beverly Hills with Tom Girardi and being like, wow, I didn't know lawyers made that much. Like yeah. I knew they were really, but like, I didn't know that much. And mm -hmm. I remember getting a little kind of like, and then it's always those things that you have like that voice in your head and you're like, well, I'll just push that aside. That doesn't really matter. And he, same thing with Jen Shaw and her business. When she started describing what she did, I was like, that doesn't, that sounds weird. And then all of a sudden I would <laughs> focus on Mary Cosby being weird and it would take away from whatever she said. But it's exactly. like, you've got to listen to those little voices, you know? Exactly. And I'll I'll give you one example that I have right now, but I'll only give it to you. I don't even know if this is the person you might have on, but I, I'll give you this person solely because I don't think it anymore. So initially, I was a little nervous for Dr. Nicole in Miami. And it was because, oh gosh, your friend, <laughs> I was a little nervous just because I was like, Holy shit, they're loaded. Like whenever someone pops up with a private plane, Anthony has like, a Anthony has a picture of himself on the side of the plane that he owns. Yes, it's like it, it's the opulence is just so much. But then when she pulled out that Amex card, I'm like, okay, 
you got to do some background checks and stuff with that. So I'm well, now I'm true? convinced. Some, is that yeah, true? With uh, American Express black card, they have to. But I can guarantee you, Tom mm-hmm. Girardi had an American Express black card, don't you think? Oh, I want to see. They said like, see, I don't want. Like, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I think Doctor. I think everything's on the up and up. I'm very. Excited. <laughs> I. I think Doctor Nicole's amazing. I think everybody's amazing. And mm-hmm. but I, I. Yes. Uh, yep. I'm just gonna enjoy this season of Miami, which you. By the way, you said you're enjoying just as much as I am. Oh yes, I, I'm loving everything Miami. I think. I don't think there's one weak link, and I love a cast. Normally, a cast this big, I don't necessarily like because that really means that you need those people in order for the show to function. But, you know, I'm, I'm always impressed when like a, just a solid six person cast can like deliver the hell out of a show. But all nine of these people, they're so good because literally like three of them won't appear in the episode. And it's still a fantastic episode because no matter what the relationship, like who would, who in the world would have guessed that Kiki and Julie of all people were beefing this season? Like where the hell did that come from? So it's always, it's just, you never know who's going to be fighting with who you pick at this one out of a hat and this one hates this one. You're fighting in front of therapists. It's just all good stuff. I'm having, I'm having a great time in Miami. I mean, I, I hate sports, but I hear with sports <laughs> though, is that like, that's when you know you have a good team is when you can kick it out to anybody and mm-hmm. they're going to run with that ball and you know they're going to run with that football or basketball or whatever ball they're going <laughs> to run with it. And I think that Miami right now, I could watch any of those ladies and be entertained. And mm-hmm. that's always just a sign of a damn good show. Even Larza, which by the way, what do you think about Larza dating Michael Jordan's son? Oh, it is. Uh, Ooh, by the way, we haven't seen on the show. We haven't seen on Miami yet, but I'm no. excited to potentially see him because they're officially dating now. I th- and you know what? I think he popped up on Watch What Happens Live with her, didn't he? Wasn't she? Yes, he was Watch in the what- audience. He was in the yeah, audience. Yeah, yeah. He was in. Ooh. But they were still quote unquote friends at that time. Now they're officially dating. Oh God, they. I. It, it's so. I, I hate comments like about age. See. When I talk about like age difference and stuff, it's a difference to me, like for my, in my opinion, after 25, all bets are off, date whoever, you know, whatever. But like sometimes where it gets kind of creepy for me is that like, if you knew that person when they were a kid, it's like, oh, that's, that's a little weird. I don't know. It's, it makes me a little icky, but I mean, they're both consenting but adults so now. She so. had she had <laughs> to have been at practice with Michael Jordan's kids at a certain point. Right. There's it's, no way. There's no way she doesn't know that kid from when he was an actual kid. It's hard to like, I don't know, to me at least, it seems hard to just like form this attraction to someone that you've seen like have an asthma attack after basketball practice or was eating a lunchable or something like well, how do you i don't understand that it's like no we it's a little creepy this is like so a mess- not to think <laughs> and listen i love love but this is like a messed up version of the notebook or so i mean like i yeah. love that lars is like i finally found my man he just happens to be michael jordan's son and my ex-husband used to be scotty pippen and they have like i mean that to me is just what a way to get under somebody's skin in like a really new, inventive, horrific way. Like it's this like is the like a twenty four. It's like a twenty four <laughs> horror film. It's like, can you imagine like something yes. feeling worse than like you're a successful basketball player and then you date your guy that you like, you know, or like a duo with? You're dating their son. Oh man, and I'm not saying Scotty didn't do something anything wrong in the relationship. I just think it's that's next level to me. Yeah, that that I, I, I couldn't. You know, like if we had some worked out, like financially, I, that might be some like Michael Darby, no, stop dating Luke type shit. It's like, because to in my opinion, which is I'm so off base now, but in my opinion, I genuinely think that like Ashley and Mike and Luke never stopped talking, but Michael Darby got like so involved that it was like, okay, we need to make this publicly go away. We can still chat, but like Michael Darby is grow, and I feel like Scottie Pippen wants to be there, but he's like, you know what? what the fuck ever now like what whatever like you how do you stop that how do you even i don't know I, that would be the first thing i think about when i woke up in the morning like uh what are you doing <laughs> michael michael darby and the luke thing. i always just like you know it's like he's you know we always make fun of michael darby it's like being like a golem type figure and it's like you know i just love that he was still like give me that nuva ring ashley i need to have, i am the one precious yeah precious. do you have any dick pics of luke <laughs> you know um okay so uh back to salt lake if we quit wrap up with that real quick what do you think about heather this season uh, and will you be reading uh, Bad Mormon, her book that comes out pretty soon? Oh, okay. So I won't be simply because 
I, I don't want to, but yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty straightforward answer. But no, I'm okay. I, I'm about to lose some of y'all here, but I'm in the minority that I kind of like Heather's villain era. Like, I feel like they needed somebody to be like kind of polarizing this season. And I like that. She lost me like she lost everybody else with this black eye thing, though. But up until that point, when they were like, the constant uh, like dinner parties were... I mean, it was riveting TV to me. Like the constant argument at the Luau, the the Marilyn Monroe dinner. I was like, this is great TV. Like, I'm glad that Heather is, I don't know what role she's playing right now, but she's fitting it well. But then well, when we I got to the point where- I don't think you can call it villain though. I think it's late. Like right. the villain, I mean, if anything, she's a lazy villain. She's a villain that it doesn't yeah. work. I mean, she's a villain that I don't think her move, her moves are so heavy handed and sloppy. And mm-hmm. I, I mean, maybe she'll grow into it, but- to me it was kind of like really and then i don't know it just like i've seen people like and i hate to even give rinna a compliment but (laughs) rinna can villain rillin can rinna's like can be a villain or knows how to be a villain um but heather to me i was just like well if this is a villain this is really one of the lazier villains i've ever seen on tv and i watched salt lake out of i thought wow what a bizarre show i was like this is truly a bizarre season and so I enjoyed it up until the eye stuff. And then I kind of was like, Same. wow. And then it was like, we wouldn't, we really weren't talking about Jen and the way that it deserved to be talked about. Yeah. Uh, it made, like I said, always, it made the Beverly Hills ladies look like private detectives and how they dealt with Erica comparatively, <laughs> you know, it was like, wow, they really, they really grilled Erica compared to this. Right. It's so like, I, I literally, so like the first couple of episodes bored me to tears. I was barely paying attention. But once they got to like the trip where like, you know, the, uh, you lost me, bitch, like that whole stuff. And yeah, then like you... the stuff going through, <laughs> like that stuff. I, I like, like Heather <laughs> manhandling Whitney. She'd be like, <laughs> you lost me. You lost Heather Gay. <laughs> And like she would like, and she would obviously be drunk, and she would just move Whitney like a, a Lego thing. She would be like, Rah! it was like when Hulk would Hulk out, and it was just yes. funny. It was just really funny. It was perfect. Every t- I I loved all of that. The Black Eye stuff lost the hell out of me too. So she'll definitely need to rebound next season. But this reunion performance for her so far, I don't know what the hell is going on because she's like, no, I wanted an investigation. No, I'm too embarrassed for an investigation. No, I was drunk. No, I wasn't drunk. I don't, I'm like, okay, but, this but is we a already world know Heather, Heather, Heather plays shit her way. Like we even saw it in the scenes from like the, the San Diego episode of like, hey, Jen, if you want him to stop talking about you, just throw it my way with the black guy. And then she was like right. doing that weird slapping on the ass motion, which I thought was so gross. Like, I was like, <laughs> this is wild. And mm-hmm. uh, I just, I mean, like to me, now we've hit a point with Heather where it's like, I hope the production sits her down and go, hey, got, you know, we got it. Okay. Let us do yeah. the show. And all you need to do is show up and be you, but we mm-hmm. got it. Like, don't like, don't try to plot things. Don't try to like tell people to talk. Like, we got it. We got it, Heather. Like, you Let know, just you, chill out a little bit. Do you think that um this investigation getting launched is going to play against her next season? Like, do you think that their like production is like secretly pissed off? They're like, okay, we just have to like literally investigate our own people because you're uh, lying I think, saying that you know all this stuff I'm sure the production i'm sure the production isn't really psyched about heather in a mm-hmm. lot of ways but i think you know listen they they're there to do a job at the end of the day i don't i think they'll be able to get past it i just think um i just think people will be more hesitant uh around heather maybe yeah um and heather has a book to sell um there's a lot i mean <laughs> I, I think it's unfortunate, not unfortunate. Well, I mean, it is unfortunate for her that I think a lot of people just really dislike Heather all of a sudden. Um, mm. But I think that's what happens when you kind of, you know, act like a real person for the first two seasons. And then the third season, you completely change courses. And I just, I think the blind following of Jen Shaw, it's like property of Jen Shaw is like mm. Heather Gay's motto. And I think that's kind of like, well, I don't know if I'm super interested in like anything that you say at this point, you know, like I, I'll be curious, like I'm not, and also just that bullshit, like you said about the reunion of her going, uh, I was ashamed. I have a lot of Mormon shame. I'm like, really? Uh-huh. Because you have Mormon shame. And that's why you didn't tell us about the black eye, but you have no problem being on film, jamming your tits up against Jen Shaw's tits right. and like filming that. And like, that's fine. That's no shame there, but this black <laughs> eye, I can't, it's too far. You guys, it's too much. And I'm like, God. the black eye of anything would be like, yeah like tell us about that that's not shameful we all get drunk 
And we all do stupid things if you fell mm -hmm. into a sink or whatever. The <laughs> shit that I would not want on TV is the bumping uglies with like, like literally holding Jen Shaw on like, and just thrusting on her. That's the stuff that I'm like, you know what? Maybe, maybe this would be weird for my kids. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I didn't buy that because I'm like, okay, but that's cool, but that's not. That's the kind of stuff that confuses me. And it shows me she's continuing on with this bullshit narrative of trying to cherry pick what she gives us, just kind of like Robin Dixon did this week. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, and it's been so, our timelines have been in shambles this week because of this Robin Dixon thing. And I, I'm I, like, I've been like out of it because, you know, people want to beat me up. They call me the third green eyed bandit. So I've been getting beat up left and right just because like, I've yeah, been by the way, my, my business. Our, our friend Samaj, <laughs> Samaj is a green eyed bandit too. And like, listen, yes. I, you guys, you guys should feel shame. Shame has been <laughs> ushered into your house this week. Because what do you feel about these reality shows? And then I don't care if you're a fan of her. Do you think this was like the proper mm -hmm. way to go about things? I mean, do you it, kind of like go girl, give us no storyline and then wait <laughs> until a podcast. Um, so I feel a lot of ways about a lot of the stuff I'm seeing online. So that absolutely should have been on camera because you're, you know, you're on a reality show. I get her saying that because I think the problem with Potomac is they are formulaic now because you know that you show up, you expect people to bring certain shit up about you because everyone in the off season goes and tries to dig up as much dirt. They bring any DM, like it can be a, a random account with one follower, one following. And then they take that as like, Holy grail. They'll take it and throw against someone, all this stuff. And so I get the mindset of, I was waiting for somebody to bring it up, but also it's something that if this was really like, okay, if y'all had worked through it in that short amount of time between season six and seven, then fine. But it's hard to believe that it wouldn't come up naturally at some point. Like there's got to be like some awkwardness in the house. It's about something or there's got to be something you say you've worked through the house so. that Bravo built. The yeah. house that Bravo built. And by the way, yes. I, you've lost me as an embellished hat customer, Robin. I'm done. <laughs> no more embellished hats for me. But it's, what it's do you like crazy. about Rob? I guess why, why are you a green eyed bandit stand? And by the way, for oh, you so, guys that don't know, green eyed bandits are uh, Giselle and Robin. Yeah. So I've, uh, I've always liked them the most on Potomac simply because I feel like one, they, so one of the things I like about housewives are housewives that don't do too much on social media and they just like do their crap on the show. And I kind of like that because some people, it takes me out of it when I'm watching a show and all during the week, someone's talking about the show and this and that. And then, you know, this person, this, and, she, and I'm like, oh God, this is, it makes me not want to watch the show. So I like people that do their job and go home. And I feel like they do that a lot. And I feel like they are two of the messiest people on TV. And anyone that knows me, I always tell people, if you start to like the housewives that I like, it's probably a problem. So you need to kind of reevaluate <laughs> yourself because I tend to like yeah. the messy people, the ones that start a lot of shit. Like that's just the, you know, my brand of ridiculousness. So I do like them. Plus they, they invited me on their podcast once. So like, I'm like, I'm forever indebted in y'all for being Wow. Nice. So you're, you're like big, <laughs> you're like big pharma, but like big green I'm paid and bought. Like you're in, you're paid, you're bought by big uh, green eyed bandit. Well, isn't it funny though? I was saying this to the audience yesterday's show. I said, isn't it funny that uh, also, if you think back, Giselle kind of did a very similar thing a couple seasons ago with the, uh, uh, the uh, Jamal is that that was all kind yeah. of a shady, like, was that a lie? Them getting back together. He was mm -hmm. obviously with other women, you know, you had Jamal going on. I'm like, I got receipts myself. I, got, yeah. you know, I was doing that old thing. And I was like, but then again, like we that was didn't a get wild the real night. truth. <laughs> we didn't get the real truth from Giselle that season either. And even Karen called her on that as well. So I think it's very funny that these two women, they really can dish it out, but they certainly do not want to share uh, real moments or their, their L's, their losses, if, if you will, you know, and I'll even, I'll take it a step further. I actually think that honestly, the core four <laughs> is sometimes a little tricky. The, the Robin, Giselle, Ashley, Karen of it all. Cause if you, you know, for all of us that have been watching Potomac since the beginning, we all know Karen does not tell the truth about most things, but we just kind of laugh it off when we go along with it. Ashley tells the truth mostly because she has to <laughs> because her stuff is constantly getting brought out like you know the daily sun oh michael's naked in another hotel room we've got to talk yeah. about <laughs> it so her she has no choice but to talk about her truth so 
it is it does sometimes make you wonder like how do we get back to like where these shows began like oh we, god don't go back to the etiquette season like nobody wants to talk about etiquette but like how do we get back to like the root of you know everyone being their most authentic selves on camera and nowadays we talk about it on my podcast we don't even know if that's possible anymore with it, new yeah, cast I members or old i think it's gone it's gone too far i mean like i i really am curious to see what if anything gets instituted and changed. But at the end of the day, we're so obsessed with these things, but I always wonder if the people remember NBC Universal and all that stuff at the end of the day, that this is just a paycheck for them too. This is just product to put commercials on top of mm -hmm. and to get paid. So it's not like NBC Universal is like, how can we make this the best season ever? They're like, how can we sell advertisements on the, how can we sell uh, Shannon, Shannon Bedore and post, uh, whatever postage company she does commercials for, like, right. those are the things, <laughs> like, how can we integrate these products? So anyway, okay. So we already went so far on this. We need to get to the DC of it all. And I want to yes. once again, say, we're, don't be scared. We're going to talk some nerdy comic books, superheroes, but we're also talking about the business, which I think everybody should pay attention to because mm -hmm. with the, invention of streaming and even with bravo you know airing a lot of their shows on peacock exclusively and you know what they call a slate which is what they have uh, to offer the audience in the next year so basically what was happening is that warner brothers is doing the same thing they own the rights uh -huh. to dc now marvel has been kicking ass since iron man and yep. everything has just come together even though sometimes now i feel like Holy shit, they're so deep into this. You got to know, lot. you got to know multiverses, you got to know all of these, you know, we did one, we did the infinity, like the rings and all that mm -hmm. shit. Now we're going to do we're starting a new phase with Quantumania and Ant-Man, which is going to mm -hmm. introduce Kang, which Jen Kang Shaw is going to miss by one day. God damn it, Jen. If you could only well, just by the way, it off to dude, the 17th. People, <laughs> people were messaging me and I don't think it's in Jen Shaw's prison, but people were like, yeah, my cousin's in prison and he gets to watch Vanderpump Rules in there. And I'm like, what? Oh. <laughs> and then this one prison, you can buy uh, iPads through them. And like, and I was like, wait a sec, what is going what? on? Oh, dude, I was like, ah, oh, it was so frustrating. And, um, but good for them. So anyways, <laughs> they're they by the way marvel really hasn't made too many missteps in fact they, i mean they keep getting bigger which i think is the more complicated thing to do yeah but dc has never been able to really have a cohesive group of movies or a universe they no. tried to do it with Zack snyder who uh did the batman versus superman justice league which got cut up to shit and then hbo released a four and a half hour Zack snyder cut of justice league which was yeah. better um yeah but you know, and then, then this Flash movie with Ezra Miller has gone through so many iterations God. and Ezra Miller, uh, they have been so problematic uh -huh. in terms of their personal lives. And this Flash movie, they're banking on to reset the entire DC universe from this announcement. So, Kendrick, will you explain who they gave the, the keys to DC? Because they're starting pretty much from scratch in a lot of ways. But who did they uh -huh. give the keys to the kingdom to? So I always forget the other guy's name. I think it's Peter. Is it Peter Saffron? Peter Saffron. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. But the one you guys need to know, because obviously you probably, if you watch the DC movies and you probably watch Marvel stuff too, the other guy who's really kind of taking charge is, uh, he's a co-head or co, you know, Kevin Feige, as we call him. Uh, it's James Gunn. So he's the guy that did this. If you don't know, most of the like offshoot, one-off movies in DC mostly they're they're pretty great it's the ones that are in the dc they're like they're connected universe that are all just a mess so like the batman fantastic the suicide squad great movie like you have these one-off stuffs but they need to re you know they have to, they're trying to build a connected universe because obviously marvel has kind of laid down the groundwork that's the success plan that's what all these people want to do that's why you have like the boys on amazon now they've got a spinoff coming and it's going to be a whole thing they've got well, the animation now universe and, Mm -hmm. It even goes over to Bravo. Think about that. Like extended yeah. universe just means like winter house. It's a mixture of Southern charm and summer house. Like, you mm -hmm. know, they're, you know, even Bravo is girls dipping trip. their toes <laughs> into a, you know, to a, yeah, exactly. Ultimate mm -hmm. girls trip. So they have their own like Bravo universe. So these things, and by the way, don't get it twisted of like some art and stuff. Like we want to believe it's art, but at the end of the day, this is a huge way to make money. They invested yes. a lot of money. 
And they've blown it because a lot of things mm -hmm. just didn't add up. So James Gunn, who did the Guardians of the Galaxy and Suicide mm -hmm. Squad uh, for DC, he's, uh, you know, he's and he's a lover of comic books. They hand it to these yes. two guys and they've been working on it for a couple of months. And then this week, James Gunn finally did his presentation yes. of their first uh, like phase one, I guess you would call it. It's called mm -hmm. Gods and Monsters is what they're kind of titling this this phase of it and by the way don't you think it's funny that like i'm like what if one of these bombs is like warner brothers gonna be like peace like you can't complain right. you know like <laughs> like are they gonna stick by if these things start bombing immediately right that's the big question because obviously you know you're people will go see the superman movie you know regard that probably won't be a word of mouth thing so they'll go see superman just because that's probably the most known you know, superhero of all time. So they'll see it, but some of this other stuff they're banking on, I'm like, woof, y'all are, y'all are kind of risking it because we knew Captain America, we knew Thor, we knew the Hulk, we knew Iron Man. Yeah. But man, y'all are kind of risking it with some of these people. Like, okay, well, I give you. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I was saying like what you're saying, like some of these that James Gunn is putting in this first iteration is really obscure comic book characters that I was not even aware of. Yeah. So they're part of this overall plan, you guys. But like you said, mm -hmm. Superman, Superman legacy is what it's going to be called. And mm -hmm. Henry Cavill is out as Superman. And James Gunn said, we didn't fire him. He was never hired for this version that we're telling. <laughs> James Gunn is writing the script. He's probably also going to direct, but he says it has not been uh, decided on, but I'm willing to bet anything that he will end up directing. Yeah. Um, so what they got we a lot know, riding on that. Yeah. But like, what is your opinion of, and we talk about Ezra Miller a lot on this podcast. So they're still really like, even in this presentation and the interviews, they said, we are still, uh, we think the flash, which is this movie that Ezra Miller did, you know, now it's like two years ago. We think it's one of the best superhero movies that we've ever seen, even though they keep having to rejigger it because it's going to set off the whole extended universe that they're doing now. Mm -hmm. But Ezra Miller has uh, a mental uh, mental issues. He's also uh, uh, there's been yep. kidnapping. There's been uh, mm -hmm. uh, alleged assault. Uh, yep. All of these charges they have. What do you think about them still fully behind Ezra Miller at this point? It is why this is something I rant about probably on a weekly basis because it's wild to me that so little gets kind of punished nowadays like it, other people we've seen like marvel uh, warner brothers whoever we've seen people cut ties for much less than ezra miller's done and it's simply for the fact that they don't want this movie to tank now they're counting on this movie to be like the the catalyst of the new dcu and all of this stuff so it's like are we you know as we as the fans are we gonna, we're gonna have to make a choice we're gonna have to say okay Am I willing to put aside all of this, put all my principles aside, because this has been a lot of crap over the past two years that Ezra Miller has gotten into? Am I putting all this aside? Am I going to see this movie in theater? Am I going to pour into it, support? Will I wait for it to come out on whatever? Or am I just going to wait for the new DCU to come out and just start with Superman Legacy? Or what's the case? Because man, I I, I try so hard not to like, because I feel like I get on the soapbox about Ezra Miller weekly but I, can't, I i refusing to do it but it's too much it's 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 been way too many second chances at warner brothers and it's not just like them saying oh my god we we want to pour into you we want to help you get better we want to do this and that it's like no we're counting on this movie to be successful so that we can stay successful when james guns takes over and does all this stuff so it's, it's warner brothers shows so their hands way too much <laughs> Yeah, supposedly the last scene in this movie is going to set off the DC Extended Universe that James Gunn talked about at the presentation. Mm -hmm. I just think it is hysterical that you're going to already, you're doing this big rejiggering of the whole movie slate and the whole DC Universe, which includes comic books, uh, video games, uh, amusement rides, everything they are under. And they're saying, okay, yeah, let's still keep investing in this person that has proven time and time. And I'm not saying I don't want help for Ezra Miller. Go get right. your mental health on, like, please, like, fix whatever is going on. But the fact that they said, yeah, it's not, you know, we're going to revisit it after this movie comes out. And I'm like, that to me is a potential disaster you're already starting off with. Because even if this movie is amazing, mm -hmm. you're still 
you're shackled. It's like Salt Lake with Jen Shaw. You're still shackled to Ezra Miller and what mm-hmm. they've done. And how do you then put him on a talk show? How do you put them uh, on a press junket? How do you do this? And I know, and what pisses me off is that they have Michael Keaton coming back as Batman in the multiverse. They have Ben Affleck's Batman, but Michael Keaton's Batman means so much. They already canceled Batgirl, which is a 90 million movie that they said was right. unreleasable. They already filmed it, you guys. That is, you will never, that will never see the light of the day. They burned the print of that movie, supposedly. Ooh. And they said, they said it was unreleasable. They said, they said, War- James Gunn and they said Warner Brothers had really, that was a very brave decision because it would not have helped our cause. It would have hurt our cause. And I'm like, that would have hurt your cause, but Ezra <laughs> Miller did not hurt your cause? Like, right. What? And think about some of the projects you've released. Over, like, see, now you're playing in our faces because that was unreleasable. But some of the other stuff that you've given us over the past five, six years, that's what you, that, that's what you're kissing and saying, oh, that's what we're putting our hat on. We're hanging our hats there. That was an amazing project. Like, come on, for the people that released Black Adam, like the people that released the original Suicide, like there's a lot of stuff that we can point back to. By the way, The Rock... The Rock is pretty much out of the DCU and Rock yep. got pissed. He unfollowed DC, Warner Brothers, <laughs> uh, David Zaslov. He was like, fuck you guys, because The Rock, that was one of his dreams was to do this Black Adam character. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're like, sorry. And so it's really interesting. Now, I do want to make it, you know, like you said earlier, is that they are going to have, I think, what is it called? DC Prestige or it's it's films that will be taking place outside of the DCU. Mm-hmm. Um and they'll be like, like, so they're going to have a Batman in the extended universe that is not Robert Pattinson and it's not Ben Affleck and it's not Michael Keaton. It's going to be a new person, but they will continue for the time being to release the Robert Pattinson Batman 2 um, directed by, what's his name? Who was great? Um, uh, Matt Reeves, is it? Matt Reeves, yeah. Yeah. So that is, but that's going to take place outside of the universe. And they say those films are going to be held to a much higher, uh, you know, they're going to be almost art house films in a way because they're, and I'm like, shit, why don't you have the whole DCU be those type of films? Right. Those are good (laughs) films. Why, like, why, like, so you're saying kind of the DC is going to be a little, the DCU is going to be more, uh, not silly, but it's going to be more accessible, I'm guessing, is what they're, they're saying. That's what it sounds like to me. And one, I, I want to go on record. I'm I'm super happy that we're continuing with Robert Pattinson's Batman because I I, I rewatch that movie amazing often. Amazing. So so good. So I'm happy for that. And when you think about it, Marvel does kind of the same thing because, but not because they want to. It's because they sold so many damn properties that now they're trying to get them all back. And you know, Sony's like, I, I, I got you, bitch. And so now they're yeah, because Sony release- <laughs> owns Spider Man, you guys. Yes. So, so like, so every time Spider Man appears in their movies, they have to make this kind of deal with mm-hmm. Marvel. Like, so it's like this really interesting thing. They have to keep scratching each other's backs for the greater good of what the fans yep. want. Um, so this is Gods and Monsters. We're going to have mm-hmm. Flash that will set everything off. Then you have Blue mm-hmm. Beetle, I think. And then there's like a third project that will be, uh, and Man, then Superman be- Legacy will be the first Shazam. in 2024. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. Shazam too. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Rise of the Gods, which by the way, we have another kind of because Zachary Zachary Levi, who plays Shazam, uh, all of a sudden came out as anti-vax last week. So DC just killing it on <laughs> who like like literally there must be an email that did not go around of like, hey guys, could you shut the fuck up about everything your personal right. beliefs just until your movies get released? Like exactly. honestly, like what are you this Zachary? Like I was like. No, like you idiots. Like this is Mm -hmm. just stop. Like, listen, if you, I don't care if you're pro Trump, I don't mean like I care, but like, just don't talk about it. You have like in business, you've got to think about business. You've got Mm -hmm. to think about you're trying to sell something and nobody wants to hear Republican or Democrat, your views on the vaccine as an actor promoting a superhero film. Exactly. And he could be wrong. Boy, he, that was one that surprised me because Oh, Zachary. I, well, first of all, because I think Shazam is probably one of the best things that it's came so out of that. It is. It's Loved such a it. fun movie. And I think most people like it, it's for everybody too. adults, kid, like everybody kind of loves that kind of movie. So, Zach, you got to you got to chill, bro. Like you, you're doing a lot. You're doing. And then like there was this. Did you hear the random story about you know, his real last name is Pew, but he changed it to leave. He went by his middle name or something like that. Have you heard that? No, story? I didn't know. So, boy, oh boy. So, 
according I, I forgot what website I read so but there's like it's been a story going around saying that apparently he changed his name I think Levi is his middle name and he didn't want Pew is like his official Hollywood last name, which is his real name, because according to him, quote unquote, it didn't sound Jewish enough. So apparently <laughs> Levi did. I, I don't know where this came and, from. And Zachary, by the way, is a uh, Christian, I believe. Yes, which is it all just out of who knows. But that story coupled with the one you just told, it's like it's a lot. It's a it's a week for Zach Levi. Well, I so even like, listened. I listened to his book um, that was like a mm. self help book that he really and I really really responded to it. So this kind of was like mm. a bummer to find out all of these other views that he did not talk about. In the but that's that's the thing, Kendrick, is that like that's the the hard part about sharing these personal views is that it really truly can turn off or turn on a fan base of like, yep. it can take somebody from really liking somebody to somebody going, and you know what? I, um, I don't need another person in my life that like has like differing, differing opinions, you know, like, mm -hmm. I don't know if I need that stress, which you shouldn't think of when you think about superhero films, but anyways, right. Um, Superman Legacy will be the first film then after those that kicks everything into high gear, they say. And then the <laughs> first Batman in this universe will be uh, Batman and Robin called The Brave and the Bold. And this is a comic book title that I loved. And Robin in this is not the Robin that you're used to. You guys yeah. don't read the comics, but in the comics, there's been multiple different Robins. Mm -hmm. And this one is Damien, Batman's son. Batman yeah. actually has a son named Damien and Damien is like this little shit Robin. He's a smart ass <laughs> killer kid. And so that's going to be the story they're going to tell. Did it surprise you at all that uh, Batman doesn't wear a condom? <laughs> it definitely does. First of all, anybody that rich that doesn't wear a condom just shocks me anyway, because I'm not trying to pro I'm trying to wait until I'm 99 to have a child. So I'm like, okay, now I'm dead. Now you can have the money. But until then, I'm going to I love that it. Batman was going around <laughs> not wear like he's like, it just feel it feels it doesn't feel good without like let me uh, let, let me just put the tip in. Like I love that Batman. You think like, he Batman kept the costume on? Son. <laughs> oh hell yeah it was just like well by the way in the what there's one comic you guys where he does have sex with uh catwoman and they graphically mm -hmm. they there's one i think it's called batman un uh, uh batman unholy or batman there's a it's a mm -hmm. gra graphic novel but they actually show batman's dick oh shit i have yeah, not batman seen the that. damned the damned the damned Wait, do you so, remember this random, it was the most random shit in the world, but like, do you remember this article came out? It had to have been during the height of COVID because this was like during the clubhouse days. But there was an article that came out. Somebody said that Batman doesn't do, it doesn't go down. Did, like, did you hear that? He doesn't, uh, yeah, him and Catwoman yeah. something. Like it was a whole thing. Yeah. Like people rioted on the internet. Like, no, my Batman goes down. Like, what are you talking about? It was a whole By thing. Way, I so. think if, wait, if I'm not mistaken, I think Kaya even like from Bravo, <laughs> we're black, texted me about this years ago. I mean, I'm pretty sure yes. this sounds like something she would be. And like, listen, my Batman <laughs> and my Batman universe does go down on women. My Absolutely. Batman, has no problem with it. So that's going to be the first iteration of Batman. Then we also have a Swamp Thing feature. Now, Swamp Thing is a DC property, really an interesting mm -hmm. choice. Uh, that's actually, they just announced today, will be directed by James Mangold. And James Mangold is directing mm -hmm. the new Indiana Jones, but he's also been around. He did Walk the Line. He uh, He's really just a director. He's a really good director. So I'm curious mm -hmm. to see what his Swamp Thing is. Then they're going to have Supergirl, and then they're going to have this DC rogue squad called the authority. Now I wasn't familiar with the authority, but it sounds like the watchman a little bit. Yeah. From what, uh, that's kind of what first came to mind too. when I read about it, cause I don't, I'm much bigger into Marvel comics than I am to DC. Like normally when I read DC, I'm not reading like the, the popular, like kind of stuff. I kind of like the, the one-off stuff, but I've never really do, uh, dived into, uh, the authority. So I mean, I'm willing to, you know, I'm I exclusively obviously... read Batman. I exclusively yeah. read Batman comics. <laughs> like, honestly, like I, like, in fact, I checked out a Batman comic from the library this week and I was like reading it nice. on my iPad and it was like, you know, I was like, this is great. I can read comics and you can like zoom in on the frames to see the art. It's actually really cool. So they have that, which is like an interesting choice that I wasn't aware of. They also have mm -hmm. an animated series called Creature Commandos written by James Gunn. And uh, mm -hmm. you have the Peacemaker spinoff, which is uh, Viola Davis uh, returning to her role as Amanda Waller in Waller. Mm -hmm. Now, Amanda Waller was the one that put the Suicide Squad together. She was in mm -hmm. Batman and Superman. And of course, Viola Davis you know, she's good in everything. So right. I'm shocked. I'm shocked she is doing this, but good. And then also 
they're doing finally a Green Lantern series, but it's a TV series called Lanterns mm -hmm. about, it's supposed to be kind of like a, uh, Green Lanterns is like a space corp, you guys. Mm -hmm. And they have this ring, but there's Hal Jordan. And then uh, who's John the other Stewart. one I'm thinking about that it involves? But it, John, yeah, John mm -hmm. Stewart not John Stewart from the daily show. And it's, <laughs> it's supposed to, they, they kind of said it's like a true detective in space, which I thought was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a detective and then booster gold, who I remember reading in the eighties, which is like a really funny comic book of a smart ass guy using f basic future technology. He's kind of like a, um, a more, a less talented Iron Man, if you will. Yeah. Um, and that's going to be a comedic project. And then a project called Paradise Lost, which was, I believe, a graphic novel as well. So mm -hmm. this is supposedly the first- Demascara? Paradise Lost? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Which is, by the way, the island where Wonder Woman is set in. Now, mm -hmm. Gal Gadot is supposedly not back as Wonder Woman. And in nope. this slate of films, they do not have Wonder Woman. So this is kind of interesting. There's some, like, Superman, of course. I'm really curious how you make Superman interesting again. Um, mm -hmm. but I don't know, this is the slate. So overall, what did you think? And do you have a positive vibe about the whole thing? Uh, so I, I've been trying to be as positive as possible. Cause I'm like, okay, James Gunn, he really hasn't steered me too wrong in the past. Like the only thing that he's done that I really didn't like was this might be unpopular opinion. I didn't like guardians of the galaxy volume two love part one, but I wasn't really a fan of the second one, but love the Suicide Squad, love Peacemaker. Like that was probably one of my favorite projects of last year. It's crazy to think that was just last year, but so I'm I'm willing to give it, you know, a shot or whatever, but I think that Superman he, Legacy- he did, Guardians, he did Guardians 3, which comes out pretty soon. And the preview yes. looks good for Guardians 3, yeah. Yeah, so I'm I'm super excited. He's giving us Adam Warlock. So I'm, I'm happy about all that. So I'm, I'm optimistic which I haven't been about anything DC related ever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's been a long time. So I'm optimistic. And I think that he's just going to have to, he's going to have to knock it out of the park with Superman legacy. Cause one, we're glad it's not an origin story. We've heard that origin since we were children. And since your children had, ch like we, we've all heard that origin story. We don't need that anymore. So whatever this chooses to be, I'm happy for it, but you've got to, one, you've got to pick the right actor because now this person is just going to get, you know, compared to Henry Cavill for the rest of his day. So you've got to pick the perfect actor, which is going to be no shot. So who do you, have you thought about that? Like, who do you think would make a good Superman? Maybe I've heard like Jacob really, Elordi I, thrown around and other uh, people like that. Uh, I just, I don't know. I, I think Jacob Elordi would be a boring choice to me. Uh, I don't, Love him, but Superman. he's not the best actor. Yeah, I like him. I li <laughs> I mean, I like him. I like him on Euphoria. I just, mm -hmm. um, you know, I not don't a good know. I, I mean, I really don't know. I don't know the new crop of young actors like I should, you know, like I, they've got to find somebody really special. And it's, um, you know, know, I remember when Brian, well, I remember when Brian Singer, you know, did his version of Superman. Um, and and who did he pick? He picked um who was Roth, that guy? Right, Brandon Roth. Brandon Ralph, Ralph. Brandon, yeah, yeah. Brandon Ruth or Ralph. And mm -hmm. um, you know, he was he didn't really, you know, he didn't really bring it the way that it was supposed to. And also, I just I guess I'm just I think there's an exhaustion with the Superman character that I'm kind of like, okay, like how are you gonna make the suit different? How are you gonna make mm -hmm. the you know, it's like we say, like we talked about it on your show, which comes out on Monday, you know, like, <laughs> you know, I think we're also we've seen Batman's parents die so many times. Like we've seen yes. Superman, like, yeah, yes, you're from Krypton. Yes, you're you're a you're an alien out here in planet Earth. Like you're also you're good, you're a good guy. Like, I don't know, how do you make that interesting when you're so powerful like how do you make right I, just, I don't know how do you tell that story in a different way and you can't <laughs> so you've gotta yeah. you've gotta really figure it out my opinion and also with an daily unknown planet. Actor. yeah right. I, I would i would i well yeah the daily planet thing also it's like once we get it's like man just because you put on glasses we can still fucking see that you're superman idiot like they've <laughs> never there's never been a time where i'm like how like how not close are people looking at these people like i'm like yeah right. that's fucking <laughs> superman like literally that super like this guy would be stopped every day of like you look a lot like superman there's no <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> way like I, that shit might have flown in the 70s you know but i'm sorry like you've got to find a different way to have mm -hmm. this secret identity and and find a way to have some sort of life yep and you got to tell if you're going to put Lois in it or what you're going to, because, you know, there are some things that are just instrumental to the story that I think people are going to expect. So you got to figure he's got a lot. He's, he's got a road to climb. 
He's got to he's got to go down that road and well, he knows how to come out. We also have a road to climb as well, Kendrick, in doing the podcasting <laughs> that we do weekly mm -hmm. and your podcast, Reality and Comics 2. I'm telling you guys, if you are not familiar with Kendrick, get familiar. Uh, I'm telling you, the show I did with him on Monday is so flipping good. I was only planning on doing 30 minutes here and we went way over that. So it's just, <laughs> it's great conversations with him and everybody, all the people you already know. Um, so go over, subscribe, rate it five stars, all of that stuff. What do you got coming up on there besides me? Uh, so I'm hoping uh, to talk to some people. I've had some great guests so far. You know, y'all love Kay on here. So Kay has been on recently. Uh, I want to get her and Aaron on at the same time. It's so hard trying to get both of them on at the same time. I think whenever. they're I think they're the same person. They you might can be. never really get them in the same. <laughs> It's so hard, but I've had them on recently. Uh, Stephanie from the Mocha Minutes podcast was just on. I love her every time. Just some uh, great guests coming up. I want, I got a guy coming on uh, who works for comicbook.com. And uh, we're talking about like all things, you know, Wakanda Forever just came out on Disney Plus. So y'all can finally uh, watch that. Yeah. And so it's all good. So we're talking about that. We're getting people ready for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. We're doing some- I uh, can't wait to see that. Th those that. previews make the Ant-Man movie look really good. And yes. I, I don't want to get too like psyched, but I'm like, that looks really- I think it's the oh, use I love of the Elton John song in the trailer. And yes. it'll be the introduction of- Kang and mm -hmm. by the way Kang is going to be the villain in the next whole this sets off that whole storyline like yes um you know we had with the uh the uh the, Thanos the Infinity and, mm -hmm. yeah Thanos and stuff um okay so Kendrick Kendrick uh Samson Kendrick Tucker, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, uh Kendrick Turner you know Kendrick Turner Kendrick Tucker you guys reality and comics too on Monday I will be on there and I'm telling you it is a great conversation so yes. go go listen to it I'll make you guys I'll remind you guys again on Monday and thanks a lot for doing this dude this these were both amazing conversations absolutely and, and come back anytime I'm I'm willing to come back anytime it's always good catching anytime up you. you need me I'm here yeah, absolutely um, there we go okay dude